Good evening. Good Welcome evening. to our midweek Lenten services uh, at Grace Lutheran Church, not just our congregation at Grace Lutheran, but five other congregations of the area as we celebrate and we look to the eyes of Jesus during this Lenten season. This Lent, we are using the metaphor of eyesight to examine how the various people in Mark's Gospel view Jesus during his Passion. They often misunderstood who he was, what he was doing. However, sometimes by faith, people did come to recognize him as the Son of God. These 40 days of Lent allow us to look within ourselves as people of faith in our day. How are we like or unlike the people who saw Jesus in the flesh? As we gather for worship, we are reminded that what Jesus has done for us, as he has saved us from our sins by his holy and precious blood and his own innocent suffering and death. At first, Peter and the other disciples could not see how they could ever fall away from Jesus. But when Peter is spotted by a servant girl and realized that his own neck is on the line, he sees his out to deny Jesus. His betrayal is seen over against his later weeping in remorse. So what does it take for us to move beyond our own remorse, our own being sorry, to the discipleship we and our Lord desire? Our opening hymn this evening is Be Thou My Vision, hymn number 776. from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The eyes of all you look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. My eyes are ever toward the Lord. For he will pluck my feet out of the net. For I know that my Redeemer lives. And at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold and not another. My heart faints within me. So as we perceive how the people around Jesus 
we're unable to truly see him, so let us confess our failures to respond to his grace and to his mercy. The disciples misjudged the good deed of the woman who anointed Jesus. And we have failed to see that he is pleased with the loving service of his followers. Judas betrayed Jesus out of fear and for financial gain. And we have betrayed our deep faith in him when making difficult decisions. Jesus' closest disciples gave in to sleep rather than watching and praying. And we have preferred physical comfort over a spiritual turmoil. Peter failed to keep his bold promise of faithfulness and to save his skin. And we, and we have let Sunday's strength fade when Monday morning dawned. Jesus fulfilled the promise of salvation, even as his opponents sought to be rid of him. And he went to the cross because of our sins as well. Pilate wanted to keep his political position. The soldiers saw only a weak man on the cross. And we have let ourselves be deceived by the world's definition of success. Jesus' body and blood are not visible in the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper. And we have not always looked beyond what our eyes can see in the sacrament. His Father forsook Jesus on the cross as he took all the punishment we deserve. And we have at times focused on our best efforts instead, instead of fixing our, our eyes on Jesus. Jesus' followers didn't understand before Easter that he was only resting temporarily. And we have not always looked beyond our physical health or longevity. The angel proclaimed Jesus' resurrection to the women. And we pray that you, Heavenly Father, will forgive us all our sins for Jesus' sake. Help us fix our eyes on Jesus each day until we follow him to our eternal home, where we shall see him face to face. And so rejoice this day. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides the Lord who acts for those who wait for him. And so this night, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, but by his authority, I therefore declare unto all of us this day the entire forgiveness of all of our sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my light. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil doers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I see. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me. But the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out darkness. I believe 
that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the, in the land, land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? First reading, Isaiah laments how Israel has been denying the Lord. A, a reading from the 59th chapter of Isaiah. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue mutters wickedness. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against you. For our transgressions are with us, and we know our iniquities. Transgressing and denying the Lord, and turning back from following our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from heart lying words. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thank Thanks be God. to God. Paul reminds us that God and his word can always be trusted. A reading from the second chapter of Paul's second letter to Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Third reading, Mark, chapter 8, 27 to 36. Jesus commands Peter's profession of faith, but rebukes him for trying to deny what Jesus has prophesied. A reading from the eighth chapter of Mark. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist. And others say, Elijah. And others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priest and the scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And he called to him the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever said his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save him. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.
In your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Though we have not seen him, we love him. Though we do not now see him, we believe in him and rejoice with joy. If you should love for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Though we have not seen him, we love him. Though we do not now see him, we believe in him and rejoice with joy. In your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Though we have not seen him, we love him. Though we do not now see him, we believe in him and rejoice with joy. The Passion. <clears throat> this Lent, we are looking at the events of our Lord's Passion through the eyes of some of the people who witnessed it. Today, we echo the brave words of Peter and the disciples, for they all said the same, as well as Peter's denials. Do we also reflect Peter's remorse, or have we hidden our faults even from ourselves? The Passion of Our Lord, according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, you also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on him and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time, and Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept, O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. My dear friends in Christ, this night grace to you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So we got to get beyond the theology and, and the passion of our Lord and, and get to our own lives about, about denial. You know, there's a couple of things I remember growing up where all I had to do is just say, I was there, I was with him, and I still wouldn't be thinking about it right now. Remember? I do. It's probably like a, a basketball team when you're, when you're winning, everybody climbs on board, no big deal, then all of a sudden, the the tough days come and maybe you've lost a couple of games and now it's a little bit more of a challenge and now people are asking pointed questions. Weren't you with them early on in the season where you told them that they were never going to lose again? And now what's happening now? We're caught in the midst of denial this night. We're caught in the midst of denying not only our Lord but uh, denying ourselves of what it means to be a human being. We have feet of clay, and oftentimes we can't rise to the challenge that's necessary for us. So one of the purposes of being here um, to keep our eyes on Jesus is to lay hold and lay claim to the one source that allows us to believe and to have hope and encouragement that never ends. Our Lord will not let us go. He will encourage us. He will allow us to be able to believe. He will not allow us to deny most of the time. 
And that's what the gospel is this night. This Jesus acts in our behalf and doesn't wait around for us to feel good about it or to answer yes. He has already acted for us. He sees our weakness. He sees our inability to make important decisions, to make the right call. So it is that God comes to us this night with these same words of encouragement. In the very beginning, the beginning of Mark's gospel, it paints the picture. This is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, Son of God. And the question is asked, are, are these words true or not for the community of faith? So we are asked this night in the midst of our own uncertainty. You know, maybe a month ago it was easy to believe that uh, we were people of promise, maybe even people of manifest destiny. Uh, now it's much easier for us to see the fallacy of that kind of thinking as we now ponder our own mortality. And yet at the same time, it's that same God who comes to us this night to reassure us and give us hope and promise. So do not doubt, but only believe. For uh, Peter, it was just a little glitch. Okay, it was a big glitch. But, but it was an important glitch because he recognized what it was that he was missing. He was missing Jesus. And after that, he went out and repented of his wrongdoing. So may it be this night that as God comes to us and allows us to come clean, to not doubt but only believe, may God's Holy Spirit continue to grant us his promise and his love that never ends. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Beautiful. The Lord be with you. Let us pray for the church around the world, ourselves, and all people in their various needs. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. For farmers and ranchers, and those who bring food to market, that God would provide favorable weather, bountiful harvest, and relief from both drought and flood. Let us pray to the Lord. Look on Amen. them all in your mercy, Heavenly Father. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. For all who struggle with unemployment or underemployment, with poor living conditions or displacement from home, with personal demons or ill health, let us pray to the Lord. Behold their eternal Lord, Lord Jesus, and grant them relief and hope. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. For all people in authority over communities and countries, all whose decisions affect the climate of the planet and the health of its inhabitants, and all who are charged to maintain justice within their borders and peace among nations, let us pray to the Lord. Gaze upon your servants, O Lord. Protect and guide them that they may serve with wisdom, compassion, and courage. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord. For all who serve the Lord as they care for others, medical personnel and first responders, counselors and advisors, friends and neighbors, professionals and volunteers, let us pray to the Lord. Observe how they use the gifts you have given them, O Holy Spirit, and open doors of opportunity for them 
so that many may rejoice together. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. For the church around the world as clergy and lay leaders seek to proclaim the gospel and faithfully endeavor to share their faith, especially in the face of persecution. Let us pray to the Lord. See their struggle of the Holy Spirit and give them strength to persevere and grow. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. For the church, wherever it gathers around word and sacrament, relying on God's steadfast love and faithfulness, and looking forward to the fulfillment of all his gracious promises, let us pray to the Lord. Watch over your church, Lord Jesus. Protect and defend us until that day we see you face to face. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so let us pray. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And so this night, the blessing of Almighty God, the Father who saw our hopeless condition, the Son who showed the depth of God's great love, and the Holy Spirit who has opened the eyes of faith in Christ, be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn. Number 778, O Christ the Savior.
so this night go in peace as you serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.